Hi guys, it's Ray with Ray's Turquoise Turtle. Uh, today I am going to start a project I'm going to call the Graffiti Wall. Um, I cut out these brick shapes. Um, I did buy the file for the brick on Etsy because I didn't want um, a super uniform look to them. So I'm going to stick those three sheets aside. This set I'm going to do, I have four separate sets because I'm going to like hand place these in pieces. Um, so it'll be like perfectly imperfect. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use makeup wedges to apply the inks. This one's a little dirty, but if I use the same colors on it, it'll be fine. This one I'm going to cut down because I don't need a huge piece for this couple of colors. And so I pulled terracotta, rosewood, and sienna. I'm going to start with those on this piece. I am using um, matte white vinyl for this. To me, Matt makes the most sense. You can transfer. You can transfer um, you can transfer without it being sealed. You may lose a little bit of ink off the top if you use a, um, a medium or a light tack is your best bet. But um, a glossy you can still transfer, but it's gonna distress your ink a little bit more so while it will work it won't give you the same effect so I'm just going to use the um, makeup sponge as a dauber and I didn't weed this yet I um because I want the best chance for ink not to seep under to the adhesive so that's why I left it as is for now. But I do want some of the brick to be like natural brick when I start assembling this. I'm just going to keep inking and going over this one. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to give them a good amount of time to dry before I start applying them to the cup. And you can really do this type of technique with any design you choose. You just have to remember that you may lift some when you go to transfer it. Do not use any kind of a strong grip transfer tape. Don't use um, a contact paper as your transfer tape for this. Use a true quality medium grip and be careful. When we get to that point, you'll see what I mean by there will be some lifting. And I don't really want these square edges, so I'm going to kind of pounce around some more. And maybe go over it one more time. I'm going to hand transfer this in sections. I'm not going to do one big run. I'm 
Okay. So I'm good with that one. I will go ahead and weed it if I can. It's hard with gloves on. Weeding with gloves is never easy. And some of these do have like distressed corners to the brick. That's why I picked this pattern. Just I felt like it would overall lend a more natural feel. Um, like you can see how distressed this brick is in the corners, hopefully. So I'm gonna bring in my other three, maybe two. I And this is probably long run, way more than I need, but I'm going with a 30 ounce tumbler, so it actually won't be that much more than I need. So I've got some more sponges over here. And I've got, I'm not gonna list all the colors because it really doesn't matter what color you use. I just have a bunch of colors. So I'm just gonna get some of them opened. of colors. A little bit of everything. Okay. And this will just be the same thing. I'm going to start I'm going to start with this one that I already had a couple colors on. gonna go random and around and around until this entire thing is covered some of them are gonna end up darker some are gonna end up lighter I will mix up which one I start with first just to get a different um, whoops and I dripped right on there so I'm gonna start there on this one just to get that spread out so it doesn't seep underneath You do want some darker, some lighter, mixed up. If you want it to look like graffiti that's been around a while. Some of these inks are homemade, so they're maybe not as vibrant to begin with.
and again, I'm going to be moving these bricks section by section so it doesn't all have to line up in a neat little package. browns out of the way for now. I do want a little bit of red and that's over here. When you're working with inks, try and protect your work surfaces, your hands. If you get the inks on a porous surface, it's going to be there forever. So keep that in mind. Yellow is so light. There we go. That's better. Brighten her up some. Go right over that blue, and I'll give her a little green texture. Feel. Okay. Let's see. You can kind of keep in mind what happens when colors mix as you do this. 
to try and not get too anything terribly ugly. But it's just keep working it until you're full and satisfied. You know, this part's not terribly exciting, I'm sorry. green next to purple so I do know to be careful about that blend I think those are the two I always warn you guys about the most I'm gonna get some pink in here some actual pink Make sure this edge is covered. So I'm getting there. Finish this whole one with orange. Okay. So that one is good. I'm going to let it sit to the side. Bring this one back in. Give it another dot of red too, I think. I feel like I overall don't have a ton of red. And I think I found that last little bit with a bit more yellow. Okay, so there's that one. And now I just have to finish up this little guy. And I think I want to bring the dark blue through this one. And I'm thinking... last little bit with some aqua. Okay. So, that's it for my three brick panels. Um, let's see if I can get these peeled. I should probably start with the first one I finished. There's one. And 
and two. And the last one. If I can get it started. And number three. Like I said, these are on matte vinyl, so I'm gonna let them sit a little bit and dry. And then I will come back and show you how I'm going to apply them to the tumbler. Okay, I'm going to start laying out the brick on this. Um, this is just medium clear tack transfer tape. I don't need this big a piece to start. So I'm gonna cut this down because I am gonna place this in pieces, as I said. Stick the extra back to the roll. I may keep a couple sizes handy. Um, I'm going to grab my cup cradle part of it. I have this in pieces right now, so it's not as bulky for under the camera. So I'm going to scooch these over. Alright, so I think I'm going to start with get this extra stuff out of the way. I'm going to start with some of the brick. I'm going to start at the top. So, and I am going to lose some of the color from this, most likely. But I'm expecting that to happen. So, and I haven't measured top to bottom. I don't know how many rows of this this is going to take to fill. So I actually probably should figure that out real quick by just sitting this on. For a second. Actually, just lining it up will be fine. I'm going to scoop this up. So I've got this lined up pretty well at the top. And I've got it lined up at the bottom. So, um, if I cut this one here, just so I know that it's a full sheet, plus however many rows that is. That doesn't mean I can't use that. It's just to make sure I don't have to do anything funky with my spacing was the point to that. So I'm going to go ahead and start pretty close to the top. And I do believe this is a tapered cup, so this may cause some slight issues along the way. But actually, because this had a good long sit, I can see on here that I lost very little color. So that's good. And I'm actually going to go back in and pull out these little half pieces. And let them get filled in by full, full shapes. And I'm going to do the same again. I'm just going to grab some. I don't really want to burnish this to the transfer tape, so that's why it may take a little longer. And I'm not going to show you the entire process of me doing this entire cup filled in because, number one, I don't know that I actually have time tonight to do the entire thing. And... It's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to kind of work the top and the bottom and then fill in as I go. So I lost that one. You know what? I'm actually just going to relocate that one to up here. And the little bit that's getting stuck on here, I don't care. It's brick. If it gets a little more distressed looking, 
that's absolutely fine. So I do want, and I don't know if I have a piece handy. Mm, I don't see one. I don't know how well they'll stick to this, but I kind of want to hang on to the little extra pieces. I don't want to use them to start, but if I need them as filler, I'll have some of them. So it really would be better to have a um, full blank sheet, but I'll stick on there fine for now. And I'm going to take a chunk of this off. And I'm going to take a pretty good chunk. And I may have to go in and out and back and forth with some different pieces as I go along because um, I'm losing some of the backing paper as well. Um, simply because when they're a different size, they might not necessarily slot together exactly the same. But I am going to go ahead and lay on this round. This is extremely awkward, this angle that I'm trying to work at. I'm just trying to stay with the top of the rim was what was going on there. Because, like I said, this is slightly, I think this one's a taper. This feels skinnier. So it is going to make it a little bit more challenging. And I may get some overlap here and there. And this is that piece that I had the backing on. I forgot to peel the backing off of. So that's why that just lifted back up. But I will correct that in just a second. If they're not quite laying flat, you can just kind of finesse them. I mean, these ones I ended up with no mortar gap. But I'm honestly not terribly concerned. So... Go back in, peel off the back, figure out which way it started, or don't, let it be random. And lay it back in. So I'm going to do a chunk for the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull... This one's going to be a little harder because I did um, in and out a little bit here. So so I can handle this a couple ways. I can sit here and like stare at the design and make sure I even it up. Or I can just fill back in when I'm done. And I think I'm going to take the fill back in when I'm done road. And I think I'm going to go a little shorter this time. And because this... Um, We'll be leaving a little bit of residue from the ink behind every time. The transfer tape isn't going to last as long. And so I will have to change out more frequently. So 
So I'm actually going to just pull this piece back off because that will get me closest to how it's going to fill. And again, I want to stay on that curve as close as I can. So, if you need to lift and peel your transfer tape and do it in sections, do that. And now I'm going to come back in with that piece that I left off and just move it down here. But I'm going to do this back and forth and up and down and all the way around until this entire thing is covered. So I'm going to go ahead and peel off a bunch of the sections, the little corner pieces that are half bricks. And I'm going to try and stagger a little bit so my back seam doesn't become um, one giant tied up mess. Because much, not, much like not knowing how it was going to be on the around part, I don't know exactly how the back piece is going to line up. So... This one's going to be a little bit of a larger section. And I'm going to eyeball it into here and smooth it from the center out on both sides. And I'll just keep working it until it's completely filled all the way around. But I don't know how much of this you want to see. This is going to take me a little bit of time. Um, I'll probably come back in with a little bit more of the brick in a couple spots. But that's it. I'm, I'm like I said, I don't really see... A huge point in dragging you into watching every bit of this because it is pretty repetitive but I think I think you've got the overall concept of what's going on here and you'll be able to see it completely done soon enough I'm going to um, lay this section right into this section. And I don't want to push that down because I do want to get that lifted up and straightened out. You don't want to just start randomly without connecting somewhere because you don't want to end up with totally wonky lines, but um, I'll be able to fill in. If they get a little off, it'll be fine. So I will come back and show you when I'm done with this. After this, it's going to get a um, clear layer of epoxy. Okay, so here's that brick. I'll let you see it. Um, there are some wonky lines. Like I said, it was this is tapered. Um, I thought I grabbed a straight, but, um, so I did have to match it up a little wonky. I'm not real worried about it because this isn't going to be the final look for this. Um, a lot of this is going to get covered, so I'm just going to get a layer of resin on it before I go on to the next step. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to get a good 
coat on here. And I still haven't decided what I want to do for a decal on this. Kind of had my eye on a chameleon I saw. And then maybe some kind of text. But I haven't decided yet. I'm getting a pretty good coat on here because um, I wanted to get in between all those bricks and smooth it out. So. I'd like it to be ready for decal after this layer. And then another thin layer after that decal and then the next step and then another layer so that should be pretty good I'm gonna let this dry and then come back in for decal once I've decided on that but that's the brick wall so far okay I am back to work on the brick wall I'm outside it's noisy my neighbors chickens and roosters are loud and there you go plus there's a lot of traffic what I did was I marked off with a sharpie about where my um, decal is going to go because I do want to put quite a bit of the power wash here so I'm going to get started this is just Dawn power wash and I'm just going to and I may come back around this side but I don't want a ton because I do want some of my base to show through. Um, so that should be good. I'm just going to touch up where my decal is going to go. That's the part I'm most concerned with, leaving blank. And then I'm going to go in with just my black spray paint. And I forgot to put my gloves on, of course. And spray paint all over it. And of course, I'm standing with the wind. So, I don't have running water out here, so I'm just going to dip it over here in a bucket and rinse it off immediately. And there you go. Quick power wash. It dirtied it up, made it look more graffiti-like. And I'll get these little spots off with alcohol and then get my decal on. So we're going to move back inside with this one. Okay, it is time to get the coat on here. The power wash is done and dried and the decal is on. I'm gonna let it come around one more time um, my resin is pretty bubbly it is um, a little cool in here but it's super warm out today so I didn't really want to turn the heat on 
but the decal says be the change and the chameleon you just saw so I'm going to go ahead and just get my resin on coming around again I really like the way the power wash gave it that like dirty look it's pretty much exactly what I wanted so that's plenty I'm gonna go ahead and get this spread and then I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun no the torch not the heat gun because I mixed pretty cold resin so it's gonna be a little bit more bubbly than normal We're having one of those teaser days weather-wise. It's 72 out right now, and it's going to be like 20 and possibly snowing again by the beginning of next week. So <laughs> take what we can get. So that is all coated. I'm going to take this glove off quick and grab my little torch. When you're torching, keep moving. And because this is extra bubbly, I will probably keep an eye on it for the first little bit and hit it a couple times. But overall, I think this looks really cool. I'm super happy with it. And this will probably get one more coat, but I won't bother to show that because extra coats are just the same. It's the same, the same, the same. So that's that. Here is the grungy graffiti brick wall. Be the change chameleon. Just give you some close-ups on it. I really, really like the way this came out. I'm pretty happy with it. You could start with like a different colored cup if you wanted the brick mortar to be a different color. But I'm pretty pleased with how that worked out. And there's the bottom. It's not full brick. But... Overall, I am super, super happy with this. This idea came from just a sublimation tumbler I saw somebody do for Jeep. So, pretty pleased with how it translated to a non-sub tumbler. Well, let me know what you think.